Hey yo, welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. My name is Ashley and I'm a stay-at-home mom of two young kids and I am so happy that you stopped by today. As always, I'm going to be sharing three recipes that we ate throughout the week for dinner. This week's meals are really easy to report in on. They were all super yummy and pretty easy for the most part. For the first two recipes, I made them even easier by using the same chicken in both recipes. So I only had to cook chicken one time and it covered two meals. Any recipes I used throughout the week will always be linked down below in the description box. Fair warning though, I change almost every single recipe I come across, but I will point out what I changed and where. If you like this sort of content, be sure to give me a thumbs up at the end of the video and consider checking out my channel if you'd like to see more like this. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started into this week's What's for Dinner. Up first this week, I decided to go ahead and make some crunchy Southwest chicken wraps. Now, this is not a recipe. I basically just saw something kind of similar to this on Pinterest while I was browsing for dinner ideas and it seemed pretty straightforward. So I just kind of, you know, went with it. To start this meal off, I went ahead and I took two chicken breasts and I sliced them up fairly thin and in really tiny bite-sized pieces because anytime we eat chicken that's wrapped up in anything, we don't really enjoy having gigantic chicken chunks. Then I went ahead and just started seasoning the chicken. So I drizzled some olive oil on top, added some salt and pepper, and then I used this pretty nifty McCormick seasoning packet that I found at Walmart. It is Southwest Ranch. And I just thought that sounded really good in the Southwest wraps and then also the barbecue pinwheels that will be coming up next. So yeah, I just went ahead and massaged that into the chicken and then started searing that and cooking it in my cast iron with some butter and olive oil. I feel like it's safe to say by now, you guys probably know the drill for me that I am going to leave this chicken alone in the pan for a really long time until it's basically cooked all the way through on one side so I can get a beautiful deep caramelization. While the chicken is doing its thing, I went ahead and moved back to my prep area so that I could go ahead and make a sauce for the inside of the wrap. So to make this sauce, I went ahead and added about I don't know, maybe a third to a half a cup of sour cream. By the way, this is totally no recipe. It ju I just mixed a bunch of stuff together that sounded really good. So about a third to a half a cup of sour cream, a third to a half a cup of salsa, a little bit of hot sauce, maybe a half a teaspoon of chili powder, some paprika, and then I just kind of mixed it all up. And this sauce was really super yummy, so I can definitely recommend it. Then I just went ahead and grated up a block of sharp cheddar cheese and don't forget to enjoy your chef's snack, that nice little cube of cheese at the end. So the chicken is done and I had tossed it around like once or twice by this point and you can see that it got a really nice sear on it because we left it alone for so long. Then I'm just going to move that chicken over to a tray with some paper towels so that it can drain a little bit and right into all of those delicious chicken drippings and all the cookings, I'm going to go ahead and add in some chopped onions so that I can go ahead and caramelize those down. So here I am prepping my broccoli and I'm just going to go ahead and remove pretty much all of the florets from the stem because we don't super like the stem. And you know I'm probably sad during this because I really dislike chopping up broccoli for some reason. I don't know.
I feel like maybe I should have prefaced with how much vegetable prep there would have been for this recipe, but uh, we're just gonna roll with it at this point. So while we're over here, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up some butter crunch lettuce. I've actually really wanted to try this lettuce for a long time because it always looked really good. And I can report and say that it's nothing special. So definitely just stick with romaine because it's cheaper. And this container is just a pretty nifty OXO salad lettuce container and it works pretty well. I'll have it linked down below in the description box, not an affiliate link, just if you're interested in keeping your vegetables fresher for longer. And yeah, I'm just chopping up like three little tomatoes because I'm the only person who will eat tomatoes in the house. Okay, and this is the last and final thing to get ready and then basically two meals are done for the week. So to my cast iron, after I removed the caramelized onions, I just went ahead and put in a drained and rinsed can of black beans and a drained and rinsed can of corn and just seasoned that up real quick with some garlic powder, onion powder, salt, pepper, and butter. Then you're just gonna go ahead and assemble the wraps how you want them and whatever ingredients you want inside of them. So this one is going to be Noah's. To his, I added a little bit of cheddar cheese, beans, corn, lettuce, some crushed up tortilla chips. You could also buy the pre-cut up tortilla strips, but I really just wanted to use these up. A little bit of chicken, some of that delicious salsa sauce, and some caramelized onions. Then if you've ever worked at Taco Bell, you're going to have a significant advantage here because then you wanna go ahead and try to tightly roll this up into a burrito basically because we're gonna go ahead and grill them back over in our cast iron. So yeah, you just wanna press these down into a skillet and get a nice crunchy exterior, and then you're basically ready to eat. So yeah, we all loved this meal. It was super yummy. I really liked the tortilla chips on the inside. And the only piece of advice I would give is if you're gonna make many of the wraps at one time, leave the lettuce out of the ones that you're gonna make for later. The lettuce was totally fine in the ones we ate immediately, but I also made one for each of us later and that lettuce did not hold up super well. Overall though, this was definitely a winner. Okay, so the last meal had so much prepping, it had so much upfront work. This is where it's gonna pay off. So if you're interested in making the crunchy Southwest wraps, probably add this to your meal plan too because you'll be able to throw it together in maybe like five minutes and it is super good. And that is gonna be some barbecue chicken pinwheels. And this is a recipe from Tasty, so that's gonna be linked down below for you. To start off with, you're just gonna take some pizza dough and stretch it out into a rectangle. I'm using the canned Pillsbury pizza dough and that worked out really well. Then you're gonna take the barbecue sauce of your choosing and I personally added a very thin layer because I find barbecue sauce can be really overwhelming if you put too much of it. And I figured if anybody really wanted more barbecue sauce, they could add more to it after it was done cooking. Then here's the leftover chicken from yesterday, the one seasoned with the Southwest Ranch chicken flavoring. I'm also tossing in all of the leftover caramelized onions and then just a little bit of the black beans and corn. That was totally a last minute decision and it worked out just fine. So if you don't have a lot of chicken like I didn't, you can totally add some of that in and it'll help stretch it. Then some parsley, honestly, just to make it look pretty. Let me know down below in the comments, can you actually taste parsley or is it just to make your food look pretty? Because for me personally, it's just to make my food look pretty. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and add about a cup and a half of shredded cheese. I used up some of the leftover cheddar from the previous meal and then about a cup of mozzarella. 
Then just go ahead and roll this up like a big, beautiful barbecue cinnamon roll. Then you're gonna go ahead and cut it into about one inch pieces. And one of the comments on the original recipe actually left this tip. Someone recommended that you coat your knife in cooking spray before you start cutting and it's going to help it slice through more cleanly. And it actually worked. So I just went ahead and sprayed the top of the rest of the roll to make it super easy. Now this part was a little tricky because the pieces are going to be pretty unstable. So try to be pretty, I don't know, I guess like confident when you're picking it up, the faster you can move it to the parchment lined tray, the better. <laughs> Then this wasn't in the original recipe, but you know I'm extra and I've never met anything that garlic butter wasn't delicious on. So I went ahead and just made up a quick mixture of butter, garlic powder, Worcestershire sauce, and parsley and coated the top before putting these in the oven at 350 for about 15 minutes. That sizzle though, it was seriously like ASMR. I had to add that in. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this was the favorite meal of the week. We totally just devoured these. They were gone so, so fast. This meal was actually 100% off of my meal plan. When I was setting out my meat to thaw at the beginning of the week, I accidentally set out some stew meat instead of some chicken. Don't ask me how that happens. I really don't know. Anyways, it happened. So I was really trying to figure out what I wanted to make with that meat so it didn't go to waste. And one of the recipes I stumbled across was a Guinness Irish stew with some cheddar biscuits. And it actually worked out wonderfully because this was one of the last chilly days that we're gonna have in Ohio. So yeah, it really was a whole mood. To start off with, we're just gonna go ahead and chop some carrots, celery, and potatoes. About two carrots, two celery, and two potatoes. Once you get all of your vegetables prepped, you're gonna go ahead and move over to your stove and you're gonna start heating up some oil in a large Dutch oven or some sort of simmer pot like this. And you're gonna wait until the oil gets pretty toasty and then you're gonna add in your stew meat. Go ahead and season it with some salt and pepper and then don't touch it for a super duper long time until you get a beautiful crust on it just like that. Once you've got the nice sear on it, you can go ahead and just give it a quick toss to kind of coat it in its own juices and to evenly distribute the salt and pepper. Go ahead and remove that to a separate plate. It doesn't matter if it's fully cooked, we will be adding it back into the pot. Once you get the beef removed, go ahead and just right in, add your onion. You can use a fresh onion or a frozen onion, it doesn't really matter. And honestly, you can also use as much of an onion as you want. And you're also gonna go ahead and add in your carrot and celery and kind of let all of this simmer down for maybe about five-ish minutes until they start to soften up a bit. Of course, go ahead and add a little bit of seasoning to every step. So here I just added a pinch more salt and pepper.
Once your first round of vegetables have softened, go ahead and add in about a half a can of tomato paste or three ounces and also as much garlic as you want and give that a good stir so that the tomato paste can start to toast. I used to never do this with tomato paste. I used to always just add it in whenever, but I've noticed since toasting it with vegetables or letting it get some heat, it really does improve the flavor of it. Then we're gonna go ahead and add the beef back in and we're also gonna add the potatoes in. Give it a good stir so that all of the seasonings and flavors kind of get mixed very, very thoroughly. And this right here is one little spot that I wish I didn't do in this recipe. I wish I did not add that extra little pinch of salt. I added it because I added in the potatoes, but I think it made it just a touch too salty. So I would skip adding in salt for the potatoes if it's something you're interested in doing. Then you just need to add about four cups of beef broth and I never actually keep liquid beef broth. I only use the Knorr powdered. So I just use the equivalents for that. And then you also wanna add in about two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. And here is what makes this special. You're going to add in one bottle, about 16 ounces of Guinness Stout Ale. The recipe said to go ahead and let that come up to a low boil. Then you're gonna go ahead and add in one bay leaf and about one teaspoon of thyme. Once you add in the very last spices, give it a good stir and put your lid on it and you're gonna let it sit at a low simmer for about one hour. While the stew is simmering, it's a good time to go ahead and work on the cheddar biscuits. Now, totally full disclosure here, I think these are basically just Red Lobster Cheddar Bay biscuits. So if you wanna take a shortcut and just buy the pre-made like Walmart mix or whatever, it would probably be just fine but I'm extra, so we're gonna go ahead and do the extra way. Now, I'm not even gonna try to remember the measurements on this because baking is a whole different beast and I do think measurements deeply matter for baking. So definitely check out the recipe in the description box if you wanna make these. But basically, you're gonna take a small amount of self-rising flour and a pretty nice tip if you don't have self-rising flour is you can make it with some baking powder and salt and all-purpose flour. So. You take your self-rising flour, you're gonna add in some cold butter and you're gonna cut it into your flour. And if you don't have a pastry cutter like I have, you can also use a fork, two knives, or even just your hands. It does take a while and don't be alarmed if you're sitting there cutting your butter into your flour for about five minutes. Then you wanna go ahead and take about three quarters a cup of cheddar cheese. I used a pretty fancy sharp cheddar and honestly it was really really salty so maybe watch out for that or just be cautious of using an unsalted butter in this part of the recipe. Then you're going to go ahead and add in some milk and barely mix this to combine and I left in a good bit of footage here so you can see how sticky these were and how much you basically have to form them after you scoop them out and this is totally normal for biscuits. Do not be intimidated. It'll work out just fine as you'll see. Then this isn't anything fancy. It's just a little bit of butter and parsley for the top to help them golden up. After I get this step done, I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the oven for about 350. I think it was for about 30 minutes. And guys, honestly, this is just really pretty food. I mean, these biscuits were a little bit salty by my own doing, my own fault, and I learned for next time, but I would definitely make them again. And that crispity crunchity bottom was so fantastic. 
This whole meal overall was really, really good. It was a little rich, so I definitely wouldn't say it's a ultimate comfort food, but it was definitely an experience and I would say it is worth trying for sure. And I will absolutely be making the biscuits again. That is gonna go ahead and wrap up today's video though. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Be sure to give this video a like if you liked it. Consider subscribing and I'll catch you in my next video. Bye.